Lift him up. Hallelujah. Let the Father see the Bible. There's no dust in these Bibles because we use these Bibles. We're a Bible studying, Bible reading church. Repeat after me with conviction. A profession of your faith. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is the truth. This is the whole truth. This is nothing but the truth. This is the invaluable Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news. The good report. The sound doctrine. This is what I believe in. Stand on. Live by. And trust me. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Give the Lord a hand. Yes. Oh, bless the Lord. How many people has heard of Paul Revere? Mm-hmm. <laughs> On April 18th, ninth, or 1775, he was the gentleman that went through the colonies to warn the colonies that the British were coming. Mm-hmm. It was a wake-up call for everyone that the British are coming. The British are coming. And he went all through the night, the midnight hour, to we in the morning. The British are coming. It's a wake-up call. You know what? We need a wake-up call in the church. We need a wake-up call in the family. We need a wake-up call in society. We need a wake-up call. We need a wake-up call in this world today. We need a wake-up call. We do need a wake-up call. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to Open up your Bibles tonight to Romans 13. Brother Mike, are you all sit back there? Yes, sir. <coughs> you missed my cue, Brother Mike, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to listen to this, and then we're going to get into the Scripture. That's an alarm clock going off, for those that don't know. It's a wake-up call tonight. I want you to turn to Romans 13, starting with the 10th verse, or actually 11th verse. Say amen when you're there. It says, And do this knowing the time that now it is high time, say it's high high time, to wake up out of sleep, to say to wake up. For now, our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, not in lewdness, not in lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision of the flesh to fulfill it's lust. Praise God. Praise God. It's wake-up time. Here's what's been going on in this world. I shared a little bit of this this morning. This has been on my mind. Uh, let me, I'm not going to get your ages and all that, but, but let me ask you this, Sister Heather. In your short time here on earth, and, 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 and again, I'm going to be teaching and preaching a little bit, but I need to ask a few of you a question. Have you seen, since you were the, a little girl, Things change in this world and change in schools. Yes, definitely. Do you think it's changed for the better or for the worse? For the worse. Mm-hmm. Sister Tanya, how's the change been for you? Has it been better or for the worse? Definitely for the worse. Worse. Mm-hmm. How about you, Sister Rose? Since you were a little child, a little girl, has the world changed a lot? Oh, yes. That was a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago, but it's changed. The world has has just changed dramatically. You know, when I was a boy, when I was a little boy, we'd go out and play ball, and I, I shared this with somebody earlier. We got in a little fight with somebody. We'd throw rocks, or we'd fight, we'd wrestle around. We'd make up after that. Times have changed today where you can get a child that's 5 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. They know everything about the world anymore. They really, really do, and it's a shame. There's no more innocence. They know about sex. They know about drugs. They know about killings and so on. They know about jail because most of them have a parent or someone that's been in jail already. So times have changed dramatically. And, 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 the, and the problem that we have with the world is that, and, and, I, and I love what uh, Brother Mark said the other night, we were sitting in the other room talking, he said the world has become desensitized 
the different things, and we really, really have. And I want you to hear what I'm going to share with you, and then we'll get back to the Word of God. But the world has really gone upside down. Today, we do almost anything, and there's no shame to our game. There's no shame to what we do. People who use drugs openly admit it, and there's no shame on it. They'll have lewd conduct and have no shame of it. They'll, they'll have relationships with one another and have no shame of it, and even brag about it on Facebook and all the, all the different networks and all that. And times not just are a change, but times have changed. What once was good is now considered bad. What once was bad was considered good. If you were having an affair with somebody outside of marriage, you never bragged about that. And when I was growing up, you never did that. Even when, and I'm only 62. Even, even when I was in my 20s and 30s and even early 40s, you just didn't talk a whole lot about that. But now it's no big thing. This is my woman. This is my man. This is my lady. This is my dude. This is my companion. What's happened to our world? I want you to think about that. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the church to understand the world is going to come into the church and attack the church. It's time to wake up and to actually bear arms in the name of Jesus Christ to stop the world from going in. We're a called out hurt people. We are ecclesiastic. We, we're, we're the called out ones. We're to put up the fight. We're to put up the fight to the point that when they come in here, they see a difference. They don't see this church or any other church in Lorraine County or any other church in this world like the world. Churches have changed to the point that we cater to the world anymore. Amen. We cater to the world too much. Yes. Let's have laser light shows. They'll bring the young in. Let's, let's, let's have the smoke in the background. They'll bring the young in. Let's change the style of music. And I love contemporary modern music. I love it. Because it's Holy Ghost filled too. But they get to the point where it's not even recognizable as holy music. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's and the name the Jesus is never mentioned, or Father God is never mentioned, or the Holy Ghost is never mentioned. It sounds more like love songs to a mate than it does to our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> We're not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. We're to influence the world instead of the world influencing us. Amen. Let me just share some facts with you before we get into the actual message here. You know, the world has really, really become a lawless world. I, I can't, since I've come here the last two years, and maybe I just never paid that much attention before, but every time we open up a newspaper, every time we turn on the computer and see the news, or watch TV and see the news, somebody is getting killed, somebody has overdosed, I talked to a lady yesterday in Cleveland that was actually managing a lounge next door, and she, believe it or not, even though she managed this lounge, she was a drug counselor for Cuyahoga County. And she said this last year and a half, she has buried six of her friends that had an overdose on heroin alone, not counting all the other different drugs that are out there. You know, and this is a, a younger lady. This is someone that's not old. But at the same time, she's saying, I've never seen this before. She said, even when I was a little girl, I got into the drug world at one time. But she said, it is just crazy anymore at yeah. what the world is doing. And this is a person that's not saved. I told her I was a pastor. She goes, well, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual, whatever that means. <laughs> okay, she's not religious, but she's spiritual. But the point I'm trying to get at is this. She has seen a big change, and she's out there in the world. The world is not the same as it used to be. There's chaos. There's mayhem. Also, the church has changed. Not just the world has changed. The church has changed. You know, Brother... Brother Wayne, years ago we would have fundamental principles on what to do for salvation and, and who to go to for salvation. But that has even changed within the church too. You know, churches believe now that there's many ways to salvation. Churches believe now that Jesus Christ is not the only way. They believe there's a number of different ways. And that's heresy. That's blasphemy. Amen. Amen. It really, really is. So I'm going to tell you something that you're already aware of, but maybe not fully aware of tonight. The church has changed to fit man, to fit women, to be popular, to be filled. If you don't talk about holy things, guess what? It's okay. If you don't talk about the cross, it's okay. Just talk about something that's positive. Positive thinking equals positive results. You can be anything you want to be, and that's what they want to hear. They want to hear stories. You know what? 
is not time to have stories anymore. We can't sugarcoat messages. I believe the time is running shorter. I said this a number of months ago. It's shorter and shorter each day anyhow. But there's something that is in my spirit and heart telling me days are numbered for all of us. Amen. Times are changing, and it's changing awful fast. Yes, it is. Amen. Look what's Amen. happened. Since, I'm not preaching politics here, but Obama took office, and two years later, we're having gays that have the right to be married. Think about what I'm telling about, and I'm not, I'm not preaching, preaching. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting on that right now, but what I'm talking about is our world has changed. Who would have ever thought in the United States of America the world would have changed that much? People going into schools, businesses, blowing people away for believing in Jesus Christ. If you stand up and say you believe in Jesus Christ in school, you can be reprimanded for that. Teachers aren't allowed to speak of it. But yet the Muslim faith is not just practiced, it's actually taught and practiced in some of the schools today. I was just reading a report the other day where parents were mad, Christian parents, because they weren't just talking of the Muslim faith. They actually had an essay, and here's what they said. Who is God? And the correct answer was Allah. How many times do you pray? I think there was three or whatever they do, five or three. But they were promoting the actual religion itself. Mona. Who is the great prophet Muhammad? Nothing about Christianity. Nothing about Jesus. That's completely out of the picture. So how can the world, as, as messed up as it is, we, we can't talk about Jesus Christ and we're supposed to have originally as a Christian nation to the point that we can talk about the Prophet Muhammad and talk about Allah and get ter term papers and reports that we have to do on that? Our world has gone to pot. It really, really has. It's time for the church to wake up. Amen. It's time for the church Amen. To wake up. It's time for the church to wake up. Praise God. The pews. And it's not in this church. One thing I love about this church, I look at Geneva, she smiles, man, she's, she's a little fireball. Tanya has a smile on her face all the time. Heather, you are just a breath of fresh air. Rose, when she smiles, all of you. And Joyce, I kid Joyce, she's a kidder and I'm a kidder, so we go along pretty good. But you know, every one of us, we are strong in the Lord in this church, and I appreciate that, and I really respect that. But today, churches, they don't get along like this. Churches have apathy, and what I mean by that is that there's no life in the church anymore. There's no caring anymore in the church. If you're here, it's okay. If you're not here, so don't let the door hit you on the way out. There's no enthusiasm to serve God. There's no enthusiasm to... To do ministries, outreach ministries. There's no enthusiasm to get on the choir. There's no enthusiasm to even come to church to hear the Word of God preach. There's no enthusiasm to come to Bible studies. When Mary was in the hospital, we saw a lady, good, nice lady. Man, she had a vibrant personality. And I shared this with you already. She said, I was going to Bible study at my, and Joyce was there, I was going to Bible study at my church. But then the, the preacher, when he would preach on Sundays, he would talk about the same thing. So I figured, I just got out the Bible study. I'll just come to the preaching. They missed the boat entirely. Preaching is preaching, but teaching is getting into it sometimes in a deeper revelation of what does the word of God actually mean. The world has changed. I know this isn't a hooping and hollering message, but it's not meant to be. I want you to wake up a little bit. Listen, Satanism, the latest report is January 2017, is at an all-time high. There's a, man, there's a newspaper in Kansas City called the Kansas City Star, and here's what they reported. They estimate that 50,000 children from the United States alone have been abducted and killed and satanic ceremonies that will never be talked about in media, that will never be talked about about the local, you know, the local police newspapers. 50,000 children abducted and killed. Now these aren't makeup statistics here. These are not makeup statistics at all. Our time is short on this earth. The Bible tells us in James, you know, we're just a whisper here. We're not going to be here long at all. 
We need people to start waking up and notice that we are in a perverted world. And if they do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're going to go to hell. You know, that's a hard message sometimes, but sometimes we need to point that out to people. They're going to go straight to hell. There's no two ways about it at all. Let me show you another gentleman here. He was the pastor of what's known as Mars Hills Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So you never will see this man. So I'm going to mention his name. His name is Bob Bell. And in 2011, he wrote a book called Love Wins, which to the bestseller. Here's what he promoted in his book, that if we're preaching that there's a heaven, and if we're preaching that there's a hell, those are just theories. There's no proof that there's heaven, and there's no proof that there's hell, and this man was pastor. Well, needless to say, he's no longer pastor of that church. He also promoted same-sex marriage. I also doubted if Jesus Christ was really who he was. The deity of Christ. These are pastors, preachers, and teachers in our society today. I just want you to wake up a little bit. It's time to wake up. Amen. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Get this. 45% of Americans say, and I shared this with you already, there's many ways to heaven. 53% of Americans say salvation is in Christ alone. So a little bit over half still believe that. Three in ten people believe that after they die, they'll still have another chance to follow God. How many people know that so far? So that's not true. We've got to wake up. It's time to wake up. 45% of Christians say the Bible was written for each person to interpret and choose themselves what it says. 56% of the Christians believe that the pastor's sermon has no authority over their life. I got some smiles with that one. God forbid. 52% of Americans say worshiping alone at home or with a family member is just as good, if not better, than going to church. That's a lie from Satan himself. The Bible says, do not forsake assembling yourselves together, some do. That's the word. 50%, get this, 50% of the church, see our church is different. I'd like to say 100% of the church believe that the Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost is part of the Godhead. But it says nationally 50% of the church say today the Holy Ghost is a force and not a person. 15%, that's one in seven, say that the Holy Ghost, the ones that do believe in the Holy Ghost, has less deity than Jesus and Father God. 33% that believe that Jesus is less than the Father. 19% believe that Jesus was the first creation of God. How many people know that Jesus was from the very beginning? Hallelujah. He is Amen. not a created uh, a being. He was from the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was God. This is the church. I'm not talking about the United States. This is the church. 44% of Protestants, and that's someone that's not Catholic, that's us, believe that if you have sex outside of marriage, it is not sinful if you're in love. I might get a few nods on that one. <laughs> Hope everybody's head is turning. 40%, get this. 40% of Catholics don't see that sex outside marriage is sinful. So as Protestants, we're worse than the, we're worse than the Catholics. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? You know, Jesus said this. You know, we don't have a lot of time. We really need to get out there. I'm just talking about time. We need to wake up. It's time to wake up. Jesus said himself, I have to do the works of him that sent me. Night is coming where you can do no work at all. Let me share this with you here, a few more things here. It is time to wake up. What Paul is telling us, well, let's go back and look at the scriptures here in 13, 11. What Paul is telling us, it's time to wake up. It's time to get off our spiritual behind and really get involved in preaching the gospel, witnessing and testifying. I'd love to have that new person, that new that new safe individual, that new served, that new 
a person, woman or man in Christ like Brother William that we heard about last week, just telling people about Jesus Christ. I wish we gave that new enthusiasm, that new Christian enthusiasm, and put it inside everybody. And what happens, because we've been serving God for 10 years, 12 years, 5 years, 30 years, 40 years, we still have it, but we just don't let it out. And here you got you got somebody that's green, and maybe they don't even know what they're talking about, and they're out there with a glow on their face and a glow on their body, and they're just out spreading the gospel. Maybe they get everything wrong that they should say, but you know what? People know that there's a change in that Hallelujah. person. There's something happening yes, in that amen. person. You don't have to get everything just right. Just tell them about how God has touched you and changed you. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Glory. Paul's telling us a few things here. Number one, here's what it says again. And that knowing the time, that now is the high time to wait out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It's time to wake up. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, it's time to wake up. Time to wake up. Now turn to somebody else and say, it's time to wake up. Praise God. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Praise God. And not only did he tell us it was time to wake up, he told us something else too. We've got to clean up a little bit. But see, here's the problem. What happens is that we wake up, we hear the alarm. Mike, make that alarm go off again. Okay. We, you, know, you know what you do when you get up in the morning? Here's what you do. You're laying there in bed, and then all of a sudden you just go up and you hit that thing and you hit the snooze button. And that's what we do sometimes for a year or two years or 30 years or 40 years. So we got, we hit the snooze button. But it's time not to hit the snooze button, but to get up. It's time to wake up. But next is the time to actually clean up. Let's continue reading here. It says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of what? Darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. We need to clean up our acts. We need to, and this is why maybe this all is fitting in with tonight's message and all that. You know, we were talking about smoking, and I know that may have not went over well with a few people, but, but so be it. It's, because here's what I want to get. We cannot be a stumbling block for other people. We can't be a stumbling block to each other. We need, we need not to show any type of impropriety at all, whether it be with the relationship, whether it's with each other, or whether it's doing something and so on. I was standing in front of this lounge yesterday, I, was, I actually thought, you know, and, and the woman brought me out a glass of water with a straw in it. I said, I wonder what my church people would see. <laughs> well, they're going by Broadview Avenue there in West Cleveland. I'm walking around with a straw drinking a big tall glass of ice water. What would in the bars right there? I could see somebody snapping a snapshot and putting it on the face. <laughs> There's Pastor Rain. <laughs> Didn't he used to say he drank that clear stuff vodka? <laughs> But the reason why I was there is the apartment is right there behind it. There's no way of getting out. And the woman was sitting outside and standing outside that was the bar manager, the barmaid, yeah. because they had nobody there at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And she talks to everybody that goes by the place. Vibrant personality. Try to talk to her a little bit about Jesus, but I, like I said, I'm spiritual. I ain't religious, but I'm spiritual. <laughs> I still don't know what that means. I'm going to have to figure that out. But here's what I'm getting at. We have to be careful. Even myself, being miles away, that's an incident. I'm sitting there with two guys. We're trying to move some furniture and sucking on a glass of water. But see, we, we have to be careful not to be a stumbling block for anybody and each other. We need to get out of that darkness appearance, even if we're not. We need to get our lives changed. We need to, now, and I'm not saying put on a false face, not to, and I'm not saying put on a masquerade or a mask and be phony. I'm not saying that at all. We need to live up to, to our, 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 our problems that we have. If we have a problem with drugs, we need to admit it and get each other to pray. If we have a problem with, with tobacco, let's, let's pray about it. You know, maybe it doesn't happen today, but it might be next month or next month or next month or a year, you're finally delivered from that. Sometimes we've already mm -hmm. seen people in here that come in and, and they maybe they have a drinking problem. It might take a year, it might take a year and a half, but finally they beat it. Praise God! Because they didn't stop. You keep on moving. You keep on praying. You keep on trying. You don't stop. But we need to clean up. We Lord. need to clean up. We need to get out of this darkness appearance. So what we need as a church is, number one, we need to wake up. Word of life, church. Praise God for you all. We don't have 50% believing one way, 50% believing. I think a majority of everybody believes in the same thing. Jesus Christ is Lord. 
There's one way to the Father, and He's the way, the truth, and the life, and that's to Jesus Christ. I think most of us do believe that if we're going to have relations with somebody, we should be married to that person. Praise God. Praise God. So it's time to clean up. To cast off, to throw away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Praise God. Look to the person next to you and say, it's time to get yourself cleaned up. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you. Say, I'll do it. I'm working. Praise God. Praise God. We need to clean up our act. And we're to clean ourselves up. Praise God with the help of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And I like this. It says, and let us walk honestly as in the day, not in, in rioting and in drunkenness and in and, and chambering and wantonness and not in strife. And, and, and not in envying. Does anybody know what rioting means? It means unrestrained behavior. Unrestrained behavior. People today want to fight you to the drop of a hat. And you don't even have to drop the hat and they'll want to fight you. They'll fight you in the telephone, they'll fight you in person, they'll fight you in Facebook, they'll fight you in the store. You got you got people. The world is just a crazy world. Now I'm telling you this. I'm, I'm pleading for you. We have to get together when we pray and pray like we never had before Amen. for strength. I have too many families and too many friends and too many brothers and sisters in Christ that are being taken advantage of, beaten and spit up and chewed out. But this world today, people are just going off the rocker. Drunkenness. We know what that means. I, I looked it up in the Bible dictionary. I have it on. It says writing and drunkenness. You know they put that together there. Look, look at that. Look how they did that. They put that together. Writing and drunkenness, comma, but writing and drunkenness, and what it amounted to, here's what, they, here's what the Bible dictionary said. It said wild living that included everything from sexual impropriety to orgies to fighting to family backing around. And then it says not in chambering and wantonness. Does anybody know what chambering means? It means having illicit sex. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce goes, ugh. <laughs> I was thinking the chamber was made. No, well, <laughs> you might call her a maid, but <laughs> that's what that word means, and that's what it means in the Bible. That's what it means in the Bible. Think about this. Here's what the Bible is telling us let us walk honestly. As in the day, not rioting and drunkenness, and not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. We know what strife is. We've all been through enough of that. Envying, wanting what the other person has. But it says, put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't want you to notice, it doesn't just say Jesus. It gives his title, the Anointed One, the Messiah, our Lord, our Savior. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision of the flesh, but to fill the lust thereof. Put on Jesus Christ. We need to, number one, we need to wake up. Number two, we need to clear and clean up. And number three, we need to dress up. Yes. And we need to put on Jesus Christ. We really, really need to do that. I'm going to read something from Jeremiah. Do not turn here. I'll tell you where it's at later in Jeremiah. Stand by the ways and see and ask for the old paths where there was a good way and walk in it and you will find rest for your soul but they said and here's what the people of Israel said we will not walk in it and that's what people are doing today we will not walk in it I don't care what you tell us in church I don't care what they tell us in school I don't care what they tell us period we're not going to walk in it we don't want to walk in righteousness. We don't want a holy filled church. We want a church where we can come and have a good time, slap each other on the back, and, 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 and just have some good music and leave and just feel good for the day. But don't tell me, Tanya, how to live my life. Don't tell me what I should take my body or not take my body. Don't tell me that I'm hurting anyone. If I'm hurting anybody, I'm hurting myself. I ain't hurting anybody. How many know somebody that's been on drugs? 
Does it affect everybody around them? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Generations of children. Yes. Parents, grandparents, nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know somebody that's been in prison? Mm -hmm. Had a young man say a while back, why well, I only hurt myself. I said, no, you hurt your child. Yes. You mm -hmm. hurt your girlfriend. You hurt your own mother and father. You hurt your other daughter. You hurt this person. You hurt that person. You hurt everyone. But you know what? Today is not a big deal thing. I'm not going to follow that path, and I'll even brag about it. What's happened to the world? What's happened to the world? It has gone crazy. It has gone crazy. So what do we do about it as Christians? We need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to hear that alarm clock go off. We need that alarm clock to go off and not hit the snooze button. We need that alarm clock to go off so that we can wake up and get up and say, Lord, wake me up. Get me out of this thing. I don't want to just, and, and I say this all the time, I don't want to ever just go to church anymore. I don't want to just sit in the pew anymore. I, and it doesn't matter if I was preaching or not preaching. That's not the point. The point is I want to do something to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even if it's a one-to-one -one situation where you're talking with someone and saying, you know what, what you're doing is killing yourself and killing your children and killing your parents and killing your, your, your grandparents. What you're doing is just, is just losing your soul. But there's a change that can happen. And that will only happen when you come to know Jesus Christ. Yes, hallelujah. As your Lord and Savior. The Bible says we're to go out into the highways and the byways and to bring them in and compel them to bring them in. You know, when you can compel somebody, it doesn't mean just say, would you like to come to church? Okay, don't, okay, that's it. Compel them doesn't mean just grabbing them and dragging them in either. You're forcing them in. That's not that. But really getting on a one-to-one -one base with somebody and saying, let me tell you about this one that I know. His name is Jesus. I once was a wretch like you. I once was lost like you. I once drank like you. I once drunk like you. I once gathered back around like you. I've been there. But let me tell you about one that's changed my life. Yes, amen. Let me tell you about one that you never have to hide your head under the covers anymore. Let me tell you about the one that'll get you out of the bed and get you out of the depression. Let me tell you about one that's not just 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 someone that you read in the, uh, uh, the books and in the Bible. Let me tell you about one that's alive today. Let me tell you, you talk about a spirit. Let me tell you about one that will take you and, 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 and just reshape your heart and, and, and have it where you can receive anything from him. And his name is Jesus. He's the, he's the son of Father God. He's the son of God Almighty. And you know what? He's here today. He's inside of me. And he's around you. And you know what? He can be inside of you too. We need to get this zeal about us. What's happened to our zeal? There was a time, and we talk about this at times, that the pews years and years and years ago, and I'm not talking about a hundred years ago, back in great, great grand grandma has been dead and gone for years, grandpa's dead, but I remember coming to church only 20, 25 years ago when I was just visiting churches. I wasn't a Christian at the time. The pew, I'm, I'm talking about the altars were filled with people. They were crying out in anguish for their children. Glory. God, save my children. When was the last time you had a brother or sister slide up into the altar, not for themselves, but to cry out and say, Lord God, do what yes. you need Hallelujah. to save my child. Glory. Get them off Hallelujah. of drugs. Get them off of what they're doing out of the gate. Lord, save them. Yes. We don't have that anymore. You almost have to ask somebody. Glory. You want to come and pray with me? I'm just using that as an Glory, hallelujah. What's happened to the anguish? Mm -hmm. What's happened to that? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ray, you talk about a joyful God, a loving God. Oh, yes, he is joyful. He gives you joy unspeakable. He gives you peace unspeakable. He gives Glory, you all that. hallelujah. But you know what? We need to. We need right now. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend the floorboards of this church tore right mm -hmm. open. And we're looking down. And Sister Geneva, you and I are looking down <laughs> in the pits of hell. Mm -hmm. And we see our loved ones down there. We see our loved ones like, like, like the... Like the Lazarus, when he was looking down from Abraham, he's looking down, and the rich man was down there looking up, and he was in the pits of hell itself. If we could take these floorboards and tear them apart right now, think about that. Heather, just think about it. Just, mm -hmm. Lord, think about it. The floorboards just bust open, and we could sit back, and we could look down. And what we're looking down is in another realm. We're looking down in hell itself. 
And to see all the people down there suffering and crying and burning and in pain. And they're Come crying out. For Amen. God. They're crying out for a, for a little bit of water to be, be dipped in somebody's finger to be put on their lips. They're just crying out in anguish. That's what's for our loved ones that are not going to accept Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We need to preach the Word of God and say, you know what? You may not want to hear it, but I love, I love you enough to tell you. Not about heaven. I love you enough to tell you about hell. And there is a literal hell. Yes, it's a burning hell. There's a place that you'll never get out of. There ain't no more second chances. Mm. I don't care if you're 20 years old. I don't care if you're 30 years old. You might think you have a bunch more years. There's young people dying every day in accidents. No, no. Young people dying with diseases every day. And young people dying on drugs every day. And getting shot. That's the that little baby that got that gun, mm -hmm. that nail. That's a child. That child would go on to be with the Lord if mm -hmm. it's not ill. But what if that child was 15 or 18 and an accident happened? Maybe they're helping a friend nail up something and the nail gun, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a weapon. It can be used as a weapon. And it mm -hmm. goes off and went in that kid's heart. And that kid died without knowing Jesus Christ. Come on. I get kids that are not saved. You have kids that are not saved. Mm -hmm. They think I'm getting a little bit more fanatical. They go, Dad, the older you get, the crazier you get. That's okay. Let them think I'm getting fanatical. Because you know what? I'm a fanatic about Jesus Christ. I'm so fanatic about saving their souls. I want every one of your children to be saved. I want every one of your relatives to be saved. I want you all to be saved. Because there is a time coming. He's going to come back. But you know what? It's like everybody always asks me. I always get this from my kids. Dad, when do you think the end of the world is going to come? Because we don't have to wait till Jesus comes back. When you die, that's the end of the world. When you die, it's too late to repent. Three out of ten people believe they can still follow God after they die. There's no second chance. Right. Mm -hmm. Once we close these eyes on this side of the room, it's over with. It's yeah. done. It's a done deal. Yeah. It's a done deal. I want Tim in here. If not here, somewhere. I want Derek in here. If not here, somewhere. I want your children married. To, to, uh, I, wanna, I, I would love to be alive enough, long enough to see your children and my children come to know God, the God that we know, the Lord that we know, and come to salvation. I love, uh, and I, don't, I never want you to leave, Geneva. I want you to be here until you're 120 years old. Okay. I want you to bury me. But I'm, I'm tell you what, you talk about leaving this world and, and your, son, your son and your daughter be saved. You know what, I want to I wanna see that. And I would love to have you here too, but if that's not the case, I want to be able to say, you know what? <laughs> I know it's not biblical, but I'm going to talk to Father God and say, you know what? Let her already know they're saved. Let her already know that Barb and Dale has come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want all of your children saved. I want all of your children saved. Your grandson that lives, I want them all saved. But we have to get this, this passion about us and this enthusiasm, and this is what the church doesn't have anymore. Think about it. Twenty years ago, if we took pictures, everybody up here. I don't know how many years ago you said that one preacher over there said he got saved in this building years ago. Yeah. When it was the uh, house of praise, how they got their humble good beginnings here. Yeah. I bet you the altars were filled at that time. Yeah. Does that mean we have any less power? No. It just means there's been such a change in the world. And we allowed it to take over our Christian lives. <coughs> I want to shout it. I want to clap. I want to proclaim victory in Jesus Christ. I want the music played to give Him glory. And I want to cry tears of joy and tears of anguish too. We need Amen. to get that enthusiasm back in the church. We need to get it back in our glory. lives. Glory. Hallelujah. I think they used to call you a little spitfire. And you're still a spitfire. But you know what? I want more spitfire in every one of us. I want that in us to the point that when we walk down the road, it's not that we want to chase people away. Oh, no. There's Sister Sue again. She's going to tell me about that Jesus dude again. And about how I can either go to heaven or go to hell. Man. That's all she talks about all the time. 
That's how we need to be. We need to be different. We, we're, a, we're the called out ones. We're a peculiar person. You know, that's what Paul was saying. He says, the only thing I want to do and know of is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I don't want to know about anything else. Smith Wigglesworth, who's ever heard of him? Smith Wigglesworth was an uneducated plumber in England whose wife was a minister's like a, a Salvation Army type of place. And she'd be the preacher and he was out doing his plumbing work. I don't even know if he even knew who God was. But God touched him one night. He came <laughs> to his wife's service and he says, Woman, you sit down. And he got up and he started to preach the Word of God. And she goes, that's not my Smith. I don't know who that guy is, but that's not my Smith. God transformed him. It was almost like what he did with Saul and Paul when Paul, Paul, be, uh, Paul became Paul. And, and, but here's why I'm telling you this. He got to a point in his life, he wrote many articles, many books, a sermon you can find online. He's been dead and gone for many, 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 many years. But here's how he started his services out. He started out with a healing service first. He would heal somebody, or God would heal him, okay, through the anointing that God gave him. And then he'd start the preaching. He said, you have to get their attention first. We kind of do it backwards, don't we? But here's how he would live. If you were a news reporter, in back days the news reporters would come to your house and all that, he would not allow you to come into the house with a newspaper. He would not want to know what's going on in the world at all. Seems like a... A man that's a man of God should know what's going on in the world. He didn't want to know any of that. All he wanted to know was, what does the Word of God say? What does the Word of God say? I don't want to know anything else. What does the Word of God say? Do you know that there's a war? I don't want to hear it. Do you know? I don't want to hear it. Think of a new president. I don't want to hear it. What does the Word of God say? And when you entune yourself into just knowing what God's Word says, somebody might say, that's a little fanatical. But that fanatical person that they call fanatical, praise God, people were raised. People were, that were just unable to walk, started to walk, and then people were delivered. Hallelujah. Great man of God. But he sacrificed. He sacrificed. And he was obedient to God. He didn't want to know anything else. And I'm not telling you all to do that. So you can turn on your TVs and watch the news tonight. Or what have you. But I'm just going to end it with this. We need to wake up. <laughs> we need to clean up. And we need to dress up. Put on Jesus Christ. Put on Jesus Christ. I would love you to have a good report the next time you come in. Say, Does anybody have a good report? I talked to them, and, and they said they could feel the presence of Jesus coming from me. Because you know what? When we talk like Him, we walk like Him, we put Him on, it's like we are. So the world looks at us, they don't see a Tanya, Nebraska. They see a transformation. They see Jesus coming through you. How many times have you said that you are a walking Bible? You are a walking you walk in your household, Tim sees you, and Tim sees you. You were a walking Bible, still are. Because you know who saw you? She did. Mm -hmm. And she's here with you today. You know who was a walking Bible? Geneva. You saw her life. You saw how she worked. And you're here today. Marky was telling me that, that you swatted him on the behind one time uh, when he was a little boy. <laughs> the Sunday school or whatever. Oh, it's funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad she had that disclaimer in there. But here's what I'm getting at, guys and gals. You know, I just want to tell you, it's time to wake up. You don't have to turn that back on. It's time. It's, oh, he's ready to go with us. It's time. It's, it's, it's time to wake up. It's time to clean up. And if we're if we're truly Christians. Let's, let's be Christians. Let's be Christ-like. That's what that means. Be Christ-like. You know what? That would be a great compliment. Wouldn't it be if somebody even got mad at you? Oh, man, you act like one of them Christians. You act like a Christian. 
That'd be a badge of honor to wear, wouldn't it? Yeah. Brother Wayne, they call me a Christian. I'm just so happy. <laughs> you know, the disciples, Peter and John, they got whipped, and, and they jumped for joy. And same thing happened with, with Paul a number of times, and Silas, and all of them. When they would get whipped and beaten, they, they counted as joy, because they suffered, like Christ suffered. Can you imagine like, that? Someone says, that's weird thinking. Man, we were beaten because of him, because of his name. Wait a minute. Maybe that's why we're going through some suffering now. Think about that. Count it all joy, yes. A lot of us are going through suffering now, but you know what? Jesus suffered. We're suffering for him too. Why? Because you're a Christian. Because you're a Christian. And take pride in that. Amen. Amen. We all stand tonight.